everybody. Welcome to Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529. Murph says hello. I'm Andrew Buckbinder. We're here in our kitchen on location again this week. And uh, appreciate everybody tuning in and joining us once again here with the web series. If you're watching, especially if you're watching on Facebook, feel free to like this post or comment below. Say hey, let us know you're out there. We miss seeing everybody at the ballpark and uh, certainly enjoy hearing from folks in the meantime. We've got a great show this week. We uh, have a brand new edition of Bird Bites in which we uh, fire some fun questions at our Springfield Cardinals players. This week we catch up with the always fun Kramer Robertson. We'll have that segment here in just a little bit. Uh, we will also hear from Brock Phipps and Derek Edwards, our award-winning groundskeepers in the Ryan Lawn and Tree Grounds Crew Yard Tips. Crucial with all this rain we've been having. Got a brand new fan segment. We shine the spotlight each week on you guys, the fans, heartbeat of Cardinals Nation. And uh, to kick all of it off, we are very excited to welcome in a special guest to the show, our state treasurer here in Missouri, Scott Fitzpatrick, who joined us to talk about Most 529 and the challenge of trying to keep that hair in shape here in the pandemic. Uh, a very special uh, guest joining us here on Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529. Uh, from the state capitol, Missouri State Treasurer Scott, Fit Scott Fitzpatrick. Treasurer Fitzpatrick, thanks so much for joining us. We uh, know that in normal times, your schedule is probably crazy, and these are anything but normal times. So we, uh, we appreciate you carving out a couple minutes to join us. I'm glad to, glad to have an opportunity to talk to you. So um, first and foremost, before we dive into most 529, uh, how are you doing with, with everything going on? Are, are you and your family doing okay? Yeah, family's doing well. I mean, you know, my wife and I have four-year-old twin boys that uh, go to preschool that have been out. And so that's obviously like a lot of families with young kids uh, that's presented some, some challenges. But, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, everybody's been healthy. Uh, I've noticed the kids have actually gotten sick less this year than at any other point in the past. So it's kind of been a, a nice side benefit of having them stay home uh, as we've had a lot, a lot less of the, uh, the colds and, and things like that traveling through the house. So uh, I'd say, the, you know, outside of that, biggest challenge has been uh, managing not getting a haircut for like three or four months. So uh, the wife uh, took, a, took a stab at uh, whacking some of it away. And, uh, you know, you can see the, see the ultimate results of that here. So I'll let the jury be out on that. But uh, everything, you know, I'm doing as well as we can given the circumstances. Sure, sure. Well, we, uh, we appreciate you joining us and uh, want to talk to you a little bit about Most 529. Uh, of course, one of our great partners, the presenting partner of this show. Um, and, and just to sort of start off, before we dive into the, the basics of the plan, and correct me if I get some of the terminology wrong, but as the state treasurer in Missouri, you're the, or you're the administrator of Most 529, is that correct? So yeah, the college saving or the education savings program, as we call it now, since it can be used on more than just higher education, uh, is, is run, it's a program run by the treasurer's office. It's governed by a, a 529 plan board uh, that I'm the chair of, and then we run the administration of the program out of the treasurer's office. So that is correct. So what are the basics of, of most 529? So a 529 account is essentially a vehicle, a tax advantage uh, savings account for education expenses. So traditionally it's been more associated with higher education uh, until very recently, that was kind of the primary and only use was to, to fund higher education costs uh, for folks. But uh, in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act that passed a couple of years ago, the, uh, the 529 law was expanded to allow folks to use uh, the account for K-12 tuition expenses up to $10,000 per year. Uh, and so we're, uh, we're promoting that. Uh, so you know, there's a lot of people that are paying private school tuition, and we always want to make sure people understand uh, you can benefit from using your 529 account to do that. Uh, also, you know, you, you get a tax deduction for contributions to your 529 account. So if you're a married person filing jointly, you can get tax deductions of up to $16,000 a year off your state income tax for contributions into a 529 account. That number is $8,000 for single filers. And so it, it basically reduces your state income tax liability. And then once the money is in the account, there's investment options for that money. Uh, and your investment earnings grow tax-free from both federal and state income taxes. So it's a, it's a really great uh, vehicle for a tax perspective. And it makes a big difference for people 
uh, who are saving for the future in terms of uh, whether that be K-12 tuition or higher education. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I need to confess, I didn't know until we, we started this partnership and I started learning more about most 529 and, and 529 education plans. I didn't know, um, for one, some of the tax benefits, but also the fact that it's not just for college tuition. So there might be folks, you know, in my case, we don't have kids. So I'm thinking, well, I've got plenty of time to, to think about college tuition. Um, but to be able to use it K through 12, I'm sure opens up the uh, the, the more immediate term benefits for a lot of families throughout our state. It does. And, and the other thing about it is, um, you know, it's, it's one of those deals where there's a lot of people out there who think, well, 529 accounts for people who are trying to save money. It's a, it, it is a good way to use the account. It's the best way to use the account because the earlier you start, the more investment earnings you will accrue and the less of your own principal you'll be using to pay for college. So the difference between borrowing money and, and saving for college, you know, it's not just a dollar for dollar. If you borrow money, you're going to be paying interest. If you're saving money, you're going to be earning interest. And so those that swings uh, makes the swing much wider. But we also tell people you don't have to be in a position to save money to take advantage of the tax benefits of a 529 account. So even if you're sitting here right now and you've got a kid that's getting ready to start college next year or that's getting ready to start private school next year and you're going to have tuition expenses, it still makes sense from a tax perspective to use the 529 account and get those tax deductions uh, to, to, to pay for those uh, tuition expenses. So can anybody in the state of Missouri, can anybody open a 529? Yeah, uh, anybody can open a 529 account. Um, you know, in terms of a, uh, you know, some people ask, well, if I open a 529 account for my kid, and they decide not to go to college. You know, what if I don't have any expenses? You can still uh, use that, uh, you can change the beneficiary at any time. So you can change it to a, grandkid you could you start an account for for one child uh, and they end up not using it you can use that funding for another child so you can change the beneficiary you can also use it if you you know if you decide to go back to school yourself if you're open a 529 account for your kid and then you decide you want to you know in my case i probably should take a cooking class uh, my wife would appreciate that uh you know i could pay for the the cooking class uh with my 529 account if i had money in a 529 account that was unspent uh, for higher education, you can also use it for uh, dorm, you know, cost of living in the dorm or li you know, living cost rent. Uh, you can use it for uh, books, uh, you know, and, and you know, so room board books, things like that. So the, the uses are more broad in higher education, where than K twelve, you can just use it for tuition. Um, but it's a it's a versatile tool, and and you can move money around to different, uh, you know, for different beneficiaries and things like that. So what's, what's the process for starting it? Because I feel like sometimes um, that first step, that first bite is the hardest to, to undertake. And then after that, it's easy and kind of runs itself. What, what is starting up a, a most 529 plan look like? Uh, it's very easy. There's no, there's no minimum uh, contribution to the start. So you can essentially go to the Treasurer's website, treasurer.mo.gov, and access the 529 plan there. Or you can go to missourimost.org. It's really easy to, to sign up for an account online. Again, there's no minimum uh, you know, amount to deposit when you open the account. There's no monthly fees for having the account. The only fees are based, basically asset-based fees uh, based on the investment options. So when you invest your money, uh, just like in any other, most other uh, brokerage accounts, uh, there are fees associated with uh, those investment options, uh, but there's no monthly fees and no minimum deposit to open an account. And it doesn't take much, conceivably, you know, every month to deposit into to, to make this plan um, something that could really be beneficial for families, right? Absolutely. We, we tell everybody, anybody who asks, well, you know, I don't have a lot of money to contribute. Well, we always say something is better than nothing. Uh, any, any amount of money uh, that you are able to set aside for the future uh, is something you should do if you have that ability. And so, you know, with uh, the power of compounding, uh, you know, if you start early, your money's going to make money, and then the money that your money makes is going to make more money later. So it's, it's, it's a, you know, the power of compounding is uh, one of the most uh, powerful uh, things out there, especially in the world of finance. And uh, like you're right, it doesn't take, a, it doesn't take a lot of money to make a big difference. So what, what's the process like um, for when it's time to access those funds? Uh, can you do that online? You know, how do you go about starting to withdraw from a most? You can. You can do an online withdrawal. Uh, for those who prefer more old school method, you can do a, you can uh, mail in a paper withdrawal request. You have the ability to have 
uh, a check sent directly to the education institution uh, for the payment of your uh, tuition. Uh, so there's, there's, uh, it's very easy to access the money uh, when, when that time comes. And all the info is MissouriMost.org uh, and yep. really easy to start up a Most 529 today. Absolutely, it is. Well, we, uh, we got an inside scoop, Treasurer, before we let you go, that uh, there's a special piece of hardware residing in your office uh, about some baseball feats. Yeah, so I, uh, uh, my, my first year in the legislature, uh, you know, the, the, the legislature, uh, before I was a treasurer, I was in the House of Representatives, and the legislature uh, has a charity softball tournament every year to raise some money for charity towards the end of the legislative session. Well, when I first got to the legislature in 2013, looks like they just brought the, uh, brought the trophy over. So in uh, 2013, uh, I, it was my first uh, charity softball tournament I participated in. At the time, they also had a home run derby. It was, you know, they had like a secondary fence that was inside the real fence. So it was, uh, you know, wasn't, wasn't hitting the, the real home run bombs. But uh, I've competed in that home run derby and, uh, and won the home run derby that year. And they actually discontinued the home run derby after the first year that I was in the legislature. So it was supposed to be a traveling trophy, but since I was the last person who won it, it, uh, it uh, has stayed with me since that first year in 2013. So here's the, here's the trophy, the staff, uh, the staff brought it over and uh, here, here it is. So that's the, uh, the old uh, home run derby trophy. That's awesome. Do you, Dad, do you remember how many home runs you hit to win it? It was not very many. Uh, <laughs> Maybe like three or four, you know, something like that. It was, uh, it was not, uh, not a number that, uh, you know, bears repeating, but, uh, you know, you know, it's a, it's a legislative deal. So it's, uh, you know, I'm not, not competing against a bunch of all-stars really. Well, and you know what, you're a modest guy, but apparently the performance was so daunting that they, uh, they stopped doing it afterwards. So apparently, well, I was, you know, the other thing was I was 25 years old at the time. So I was, I was, I was by far, I think, the youngest person participating, and it was probably a little bit of an advantage for me at the time. But, um, you know, I'm just glad they discontinued it. If they start it back up, I have to get a new trophy because uh, <laughs> I have to pry it out of my cold bed hands. I'm not giving up the trophy at this point. Yeah, nor should you. Nor should you. Well, uh, Missouri State Treasurer Scott Fitzpatrick. Uh, Treasurer Fitzpatrick, thanks again so much for your time and, and uh, all, all that you're doing for our state right now. We appreciate your leadership and helping navigate us all through these times. Absolutely. It's, uh, thanks for taking the time and uh, enjoy enjoyed the conversation. Do you have a little girl who plays softball? If they become a pitcher, they could be racking up the K's when they get older. But strikeouts won't help you save for school expenses. That's where a Missouri Most 529 education plan comes in. This tax-deferred investment account can be used to pay for K-12, through a two- to four-year college, even trade or grad school. It's flexible enough to be used for all sorts of education goals. So don't whiff on your chance to save for education. Get the 101 on a 529 at MissouriMost.com slash 529facts. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for the We Love Our Fans segment. I'm Regina Norris, and this week we're going to bring a piece of the ballpark to your home screens. Now you may think that this game is best played wearing a sombrero, but if you don't have one, it's okay because wearing a Cardinals hat is even better. Keep your eyes peeled and join us in playing the Sombrero Shuffle, brought to you by Mexican Villa.
Mask and Villa Sombrero Shuffle. We hope you enjoyed it and a virtual high five to everyone who picked the right sombrero. We would love to see more pictures and videos shared by you, our fans. Next week's theme is going to be Show Us Your Bobblehead Collection. You can share your collection with us by emailing springfield at cardinals.com and putting bobblehead collection in the subject line. Check us out next week to see if your bobbleheads end up on the show, and we'll see you next time on the We Love Our Fans segment. Well, we continue along with this week's episode of Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529 with a brand new edition of Bird Bites, our new segment in which Matt Turr, our PR and digital media specialist, and I alternate firing off some fun questions at our Springfield Cardinals players. This week, we're joined by Kramer Robertson, who's always a good time to catch up with. Well, we uh, continue along here in Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529, and it's time for this week's edition of Bird Bites, where we welcome in our uh, Springfield Cardinals and, and get to know these guys in kind of a fun way. And uh, we've got the always entertaining Kramer Robertson joining us from last year's club. Kramer's splitting the year between Memphis and Springfield. And uh, Kramer, thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us today. How you doing? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Glad to be on. Now, we were just talking a minute ago, if, if you're not, if you're out there and you're not following Kramer Robertson on social media, you're missing out. Because last week, you and your mom, who just happens to be a Hall of Fame basketball coach, Kim Mulkey, put out an incredible video of uh, you doing a backflip off a diving board and catching a football from her. Yeah, that was pretty tough. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it, um, I took a few tries and uh, I was just out there messing around, jumping off the diving board, and she started throwing it to me, and it eventually came to that where I was going to try to do a flip, and she she threw it. And I think it was a better throw than catch. It had to be a perfect throw for me to catch that because I was kind of blind when I was doing the flip. But uh, it was a pretty cool video, of course. So, and you, you put out one earlier in this whole quarantine deal of some trick shots uh, on your basketball court. And, I mean, what what's like – and this isn't even part of Bird Bites. This is just me being curious. What's – um the like drawing board process for this do you guys have little planning meetings or is it just sort of spur of the moment no just kind of spur of the moment the whole trick shot video i was just really bored during the quarantine didn't have much to do uh can't go anywhere obviously so i just went out in the backyard and uh started trying trick shots and one led to another and they i just started getting more difficult with each one more creative kind of on the same thing i mean it looks like you inspired evan mendoza to do some videos of his own. I don't know if you saw his sliding videos on his dock yesterday. No, I haven't seen those. Uh, maybe maybe he saw mine and got got some ideas. I actually have not seen those. I'll have to go check them out. Yeah, he might have. I don't know if it was like brothers or what, but if they weren't, it looks like he was hanging out with like four or five eight-year-olds from his neighborhood. So I think he's bored too. Yeah, I think, I think we all are. We're all trying to find something to keep us entertained. It's, uh, it can get pretty monotonous just being home all day by yourself. Yeah, which is a perfect transition to our, uh, our Bird Bites rundown. We're going to throw hard-hitting question after hard-hitting question at you here. Uh, and Matt Turr, our PR specialist. Matt, you want to start it off? Yeah, so which player uh, did you grow up idolizing? So I'm, I grew up in Texas, so the Rangers were on TV every night. So um, I can remember being in my uniform in front of the TV imitating Alex Rodriguez when he played shortstop for the Rangers. I was in my Alex Rodriguez jersey with my little baseball bat, pretending I was up to bat, and I was him. And then um, as I got older um, in high school, the Rangers actually lost. They, they were so bad forever, and then they finally uh, got good when I was in about high school age, and they got to the World Series two years in a row. And one year the Cardinals walked them off, and so I was just – I hated the Cardinals in high school. I was so mad that they beat the Rangers. and then. Um, <laughs> ironically ended up getting drafted by them and glad I did because it's such a first class organization but at the time in high school I was so devastated that they that they came back and beat the Rangers in the World Series that's pretty funny <laughs> all right so what uh what insect creeps you out the most insect um well I guess a snake is a not an insect so I guess um spiders I don't I don't love spiders they're not terrible but um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of spiders. But you would go, you'd go spider over snake or like? No, no, not even close. Snake over spider. Snakes are like 
I, I hate snakes. Like if I see a snake, I'm not going anywhere near it, poisonous or not. Like that is my, one of my biggest fears is snakes. I hate them. Jeez, we have four snakes in our backyard I found this spring. So it's not a big thing for you. Terrible. We have a ton of text. We have the rattlesnakes here. They freak me out, man. <laughs> I, hate, I hate snakes. All right. So if you couldn't play pro baseball, which sport would you play? Football. If I could play any sport, it'd be football. I was a uh, high school quarterback in Texas. And football was always my favorite sport. I just didn't grow to be big enough. My dad was a college quarterback at uh, Louisiana Tech, and that's always been my first love. Um, just fortunately or unfortunately, wasn't big enough to play college or professionally. Um, and so I, I didn't get a bad gig playing baseball, but I've always been, been a football guy. What were those high school crowds like in Texas for football? So I lost the state championship in high school at Cowboy Stadium, and we had well over 50,000 people there. Jeez. And the home game, anywhere from eight to 10,000, we sold it out almost every game. It's, it's a wild. big deal. It's <laughs> a big deal. If you see the movie Friday Night Lights, it's, it's not too much different than that. It's, it is a big deal in Texas. So, okay, our next one here um, can either be hypothetical or in actuality. We don't need to know either way, but – you and your either hypothetical or actual significant other are going out um, for a day of kayaking. Do you guys okay. choose the double kayak or do you go two single kayaks? Oh, um, I would probably want to go single kayak, but then I would feel guilty if uh, my significant other crashed or flipped their kayak or anything happened. So you I'd want to be by myself, but I think being a good significant, being a good boyfriend and partner would be, um, it would be more responsible to go double kayak. <laughs> See, that's a great answer, and you can tell that you're not married because <laughs> anybody who's married goes single kayaks every time. Yeah, that's <laughs> better. That's better far. afternoon if you just go single kayaks. <laughs> I'm far from being married. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think I've had pineapple and a pizza since my friend Jared's pool parties in middle school because his parents would order that all the time. Um, what are your thoughts on pineapple and pizza? They don't go together. Not a, not a fan. I, the only thing I eat, I don't eat anything on pizza. I just like cheese. I'm, I'm so plain. I just like cheese pizza. Um, I mean, I can eat the hamburger or the pepperoni, but I usually pull off the pepperoni. It's not a fan. Just like regular cheese pizza. Respect like that. It. Yeah. Uh, okay, so last year, uh, I'm sure everybody remembers, you hit a home run off of Clayton Kershaw in, uh, in a rehab game in Tulsa. What was the first home run that you ever hit at any level? The first home run I ever hit was in 10-year-old Little League, um, and I actually have a video of it at my house. It was um, – my team was the Mets. I remember that, and I still have the baseball in my uh, game room at home. And I'd gotten close like each year, like eight, nine, a couple times that season. And then I finally hit one and I didn't even think it was going to go over. And it did. And I'll never forget that home run, the first over, my first over the fence home run. Left center right. field. Over center, center, center. Left, left center left field. Center. <laughs> That's where the one off Kershaw went too, right? Yeah, I, the one off Kershaw. Um, I think that went out of the ballpark into the parking lot. I'm gonna keep each year. I'm gonna keep telling people it went further and further <laughs> <laughs> over the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, even if it did go first throw by by next year, I'm telling people that it hit it off the middle of the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Um, so, what player's jersey uh, do you own other than your own? Oh, uh, baseball jerseys. I don't. I don't own. I don't own any of them anymore. Once. Once I got to pro baseball, honestly, I threw them out. Uh, I didn't want to own. I didn't want to own any kind of prideful. I didn't want to own any jerseys against anybody that I could play against. So I have no baseball jerseys. Okay. Know, what about other sports? About, but, <laughs> um, other sports. I have Jordan, LeBron. I have a lot of basketball ones. Um, I have some cowboy jerseys from years past. Um, not a huge. Not not a huge jersey guy anymore. Growing up. 
you name the player, I had him. Baseball, basketball. Um, I had my Alex Rodriguez, my Allen Iverson. That's why I love being number three because when I first started playing sports, those were my guys in each sport, and they both wore number three. And so that's why I started started wearing number three. But as a kid, I had every jersey of any big player in any big sport. I was I had to have them. Okay, what uh, switching topics here? What is your your dream vacation? Oh, um, my dream vacation. I, I mean, I've been to the beach, a lot of different beaches. I've been snow skiing. I've been places like that. I probably would want to go somewhere new, like maybe like Dubai, somewhere like crazy. Look that those pictures of that place look awesome. I'd want to do something different, um, rather than just go to a beach or go to, go to go snow skiing. I feel like any time I think of Dubai, I think of someone hitting a golf ball over that giant skyscraper or off of it. Yeah. Um, it's got to be yeah. top of the list. Yeah, it just it just looks different. I, I hear it's super nice, and uh, you could just do things that are different there. Sure. Um, bringing it back home a bit, what's your go-to pregame meal? Chicken parm. Huge chicken parm fan. I love spaghetti, and I love – chicken so you throw those two together it's perfect <laughs> what else could you ask for yeah all right and our last one before we uh let you off the hot seat here what uh so far what's been the favorite moment of your baseball career uh by far um was the weekend it wasn't just one moment it was the weekend where um my senior year of college where we we beat mississippi state uh, to go to the College World Series at our home field. And then a day or two later, I was drafted by the Cardinals. So I fulfilled two dreams in 48 hours. And that, I mean, that whole weekend was just so special. I got to spend it with family and friends. And um, I, don't, I don't think anything can top that unless I get to the major leagues. Sure. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're happy it was the Cardinals that drafted you, even though it crushed uh, it crushed Little Kramer's dreams from years ago of playing for the Texas David Rangers. But David Freeze crushed crushed sixteen year old Kramer's dreams that night. I'll never <laughs> down the down the last strike twice. Lance Berkman saw him during spring training. They showed the video of it. Still, still have a little PTSD about it. But uh, <laughs> glad the Cardinals drafted me. It's a great organization to be in. Great great affiliates and uh, great people running it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're happy to have you, that's for sure. And uh, we appreciate you taking some time uh, during these, these crazy times we're in to hang out with us and do bird bites. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Welcome back to a new week of Grounds Crew Yard Tips presented by Ryan Lawn and Tree. I'm Matt Turrer, the Cardinal social media guy. We're out here at Hammonds Field this week to kind of talk about all the rain we've been having. How does this field deal with excess rain? And then how can you deal with it at home? That's why I'm dressed a little bit like a bank robber in a hurricane. But we're gonna throw it over to two people who are dressed a little more appropriately to be working on the field, starting with Brock Phipps, and then we're gonna throw it over to Derek Edwards. Enjoy. Well, here we have thought after last year's record rainfall in May, we'd follow up with the second highest this year. But here at Hammonds Field, we're able to drain about six inches in an hour or two and still be able to play at night. And what makes that possible is our drainage system here at Hammonds Field. And as you can see from this plug I pulled, we have four to five inches of sand. And with that, if you can see it good enough or not, is our root system. And with the amount of rain we've been having, we have to watch you know, how far the roots are coming up or going down. And when it's wet like this, they usually draw up. And that leads to uh, you know, fungus problems on the field. And that's something we have to watch for. All right, some effects on your yard from excessive rainfall will be surface damage. So you want to limit the traffic on your yard. You don't want to mow your yard right after a heavy rainfall. That can lead to compaction. Um, even as simple as drag, dragging your trash can across the yard can uh, compact that soil, which will lead to long-term damage to your yard. Other, other tips would be when you go to mow your yard after a heavy rainfall, you want to make sure and wait as long as possible for it to be dry. Um, I know that's hard in a pattern like this, but the, the, you don't want to mow when it's wet, you want to raise the height of your mower and not mow when the grass blades are wet to avoid clumping, which can, with that soil sitting, or the grass clipping sitting on the ground, can lead to yellowing of your yard. Excess rainfall has, uh, will wash the nutrients out of the soil, so you'll need to consider fertilizing your yard to keep up, to keep the grass in uh, good growing shape. If you have uh, 
low areas in your yard after heavy rainfall, you notice it's ponding of water. You might want to consider in those areas putting in some drainage to help move that water on or bring some soil in and kind of raise those areas up because that water sitting on the ground doesn't allow that grass to get oxygen, which is going to cause it to yellow out. You're going to see more weeds that are be growing, so you want to make sure and kind of keep on top of that with a different program. And also the, the, the water will, the roots will shallow up, which will also have an effect allowing uh, insects to attack and uh, root zone problems. So you want to consider possibly some fungicides or things to treat that in your yard going forward. Thanks for watching Ground Screw Yard Tips brought to you by Rye Lawn and Tree. Uh, we'll see you next week. Now that's going to do it for this week's episode of Fly Together brought to you by Most 529. I want to say another big thank you to our guests this week, Missouri State Treasurer Scott Fitzpatrick and Springfield Cardinals infielder Kramer Robertson joining us for Bird Bites. Of course, Brock and Derek always doing a great job with the yard tips as well. For our production team, Ken Shelton, TJ Patton, Regina Norris, and Matt Turr, I'm Andrew Buckbinder. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Enjoy the ballpark moment to close out the show as always, and we'll talk to you next week. Wave it to the right. Here's a popped up bump, bunt first base side, and a diving catch by Evan Mendoza. And he gets a nice slap on the old shoulder from his pitcher, Will Latcha. Mendoza on a foul out, bunt try off the bat of Burt. Lays out, hauls it in.